Hi there, uh, I'm Adam Waits from Smartbox and today in this short video tutorial I'm going to talk about how to set up a single switch scan in Grid 3. So in this video we're going to cover what a single switch scan is, how to connect your switch dependent on your device or computer, setting up your activation method, looking at the switch advance and select settings in Grid 3, setting up your scanning speed, and we'll touch on some of the further options that are available to explore. So without further ado, let's have a look at the software. So I've moved over to the computer now, and you can see on the screen that Grid 3 is open, and that I have Grid Explorer um, on, the, on the screen. And the very first thing I need to do in order to set up my switch is to click on the menu bar, anywhere, choose settings, and then choose access from the right from the left hand side, followed by the option that says switches. So there's a few steps to take here, and the first one is to choose how your switch is connected to your computer. Today I happen to be using a laptop, but typically you might be using a communication device such as a grid pad. And the connection method will change according to that. So you may need some guidance on which connection method to use. If I choose connection, and in this instance, I'm using a joystick type switch interface, something called a joy cable. So I've got joystick selected. I press my switch. If I happen to be using an AAC device, a communication device such as a grid pad, in that list automatically will be the option grid pad switches. And I would select that. So my switch is working, I'm happy with that. And I choose the back button. And the next stage is to set up switch scanning. So already automatically switch scanning is uh, selected as my activation method from the list. And I need to choose the activation button next to that. So there's some default settings already set up in the grid, which is typically to scan a row at a time and then a cell to automatically advance with a single switch making a selection. So my single switch, which I'm pressing now and is highlighting, is my activation or my selection switch, my choosing switch, if you like. The computer is going to do the moving for me. And importantly, when you've got that setting, uh, the, the computer automatically advancing is there is a timing element. How long should the computer spend on each row or cell? And currently that's set to 1.5 seconds. I'm just going to take that down a little bit for, for the purposes of today. And a test grid at the bottom, a test button is helpful. So if I choose test, and we can now see how a switch scan works and check it, it's being recognized. So I press my switch and the scanning starts. It's scanning a row at a time. I'm going to press my switch. It selects the row. And I press my switch again and it selects the item in that row. And that's called switch scanning with a row, um, a row then cells scan. There are some other options here that you can choose. You'd be guided by usually your clinician or advisor here, um, depending on what type of grid you're using. You might be introducing uh, a block. Um, if you're using switches for the very first time and perhaps you're working uh, with a young child, for example, you might have very little on the screen and just want to scan one cell at a time. OK, but there are some other options here to explore. Um, the other thing that there's an option on here is instead of automatically uh, advance, if someone has the control, introducing something called hold to advance might be helpful. So I'm going to choose hold to advance and I'm going to set up my switch one to be the switch that I hold which means typically I would need a second switch to make my choice, to make my selection. But there is an option right at the top of the list here to choose a dwell. OK, so this works really well if I've got somebody who's, who is able to hold their switch down comfortably. So I'm going to, and importantly, to release their switch. So I'm going to use the test button again. I press my switch and while I'm holding my switch down, the switch scan is moving. Only when I release does it 
use a dwell to select that row. Now at the moment, it's not gonna start moving automatically until I press my switch again. And it's moving at my pace, I can decide, and then dwell to select, okay? So that's nice if someone's got the control. And what I like about this, I'll do it one more time. I press my switch. If I make a mistake and release my switch momentarily, but then realize that that's not what I wanted, I can just pick up again and keep going. So I might release by accident, oh, but I can pick up and carry on until I get to the one that I want. So whilst it needs an element of control, it's a nice uh, activation method. So I'll choose the back button again. I will re revert back to automatically advancing. And you'll see now I just need to switch my activating switch back to switch one. Just check it's working. So before I show you this working in a real grid set, just a couple of other things to note in terms of further options. There's an option to automatically starting a scanner at the beginning of um, after making a selection. Uh, that can be helpful for someone who's a, a competent user, not having to press a switch to start. There are other options here, but ones to pick out would be the visual highlighting and typically whether a sound is heard when highlighting. So for some people, it can be helpful to have what's called an auditory scan where the cell is red as it moves across um, the, the scan. That's probably a, an option for a further tutorial, uh, but just to say there are some further options here to explore. One last thing to note, if I come out of switch scanning, there is an option here that says under configuration that talks about switch presses. Now, if someone's got a slight tremor, for example, there are some helpful options here. So, an option here to ignore accidental presses can be helpful. If I turn that on, if I say that I will only accept a firm press, which is more than, in this instance, 0.3 of a second, a brief press, the red is indicating it's being ignored. If I do a nice firm press, I get a selection. So that can be quite a helpful option. Uh, the other option can be someone who perseverates on a switch, in other words, they press, they make their selection, but make some follow on accidental presses. And so in, this, in that instance, I turn that option off and the ignore repeat presses on, that would ignore any <coughs> presses within a length of time after making a successful selection. Okay. The default option here is to accept the action of the switch as you press it but it can be helpful for other people that the action only kicks into place once they release their switch, but the default is to accept on switch press. So I'm gonna take that off. I'm using a one second scan. I'm gonna click on okay now, and just, we're just gonna see that in action. And I'm gonna go into a grid set here called Supercore. So I'm gonna, it's the very first item, press my switch to start. And you can see I have to make a number of switch presses one after the other there. So I can write a quick sentence. Okay, I like this. Now that was using a row column scan. To finish with, I'm gonna go back to the menus, settings, access, switches, and then to activation. I'm just gonna briefly show you what it looks like if I turn on a block scan, in addition to my row, this is then cell scan. And this is most useful when you've got quite a big grid set with a high cell count. So let's have a look at what that looks now. It looks like now uh, in Supercore. So I'm gonna start just by clearing my existing message. So if I was to try and write that same message again, what's gonna happen is that different 
parts of the screen are going to be highlighted instead of rows to begin with. So you'll see that the scan block seems to be darting around based upon what type of cells they are. OK, so I'm going to select uh, an option from the pronouns, which are the yellow buttons. I want to say I. And then I'm going to choose a verb like and I'm going to wait until the verbs are highlighted. Then I'm going to move down. And then across. And then I'm going to choose a small word this. And this is where blocks can become helpful because it's a little bit away from the beginning of my scan. But I can get there a bit more quickly. OK. So that's called a scan block. I've set up some scan blocks on this page. So that's a quick getting started with switch scanning. I hope it was helpful. If you need any help at all, don't hesitate to visit our website at thinksmartbox.com where there's plenty of additional help and some webinars on things like this. Um, and also don't hesitate to contact us uh, or our support team who are always happy and willing to help with any questions you may have. Thanks very much for listening.